Hello everybody, and uh, welcome to a, uh, a fun little temporary uh, campaign that we're going to have going on. It's going to be three sessions long. I'm very excited for it. I finally dragged um, Mathis here kicking and screaming over to my channel to, uh, to be a part of a little campaign over here. So thank you very much, Mike, for stopping by and, and hanging out for a little bit. I well, just remember how much you agreed to pay me, and we're good. Oh God, I do remember, and mm -hmm. I'm gonna be so happy when you're done folding my laundry for me. And you're welcome for allowing you to do that. You know? Oh yeah, we yeah. all have our kink, and it's Valentine's, so I'm not gonna shame you. Um, hi Maggie, hi Ollie, how you guys doing? That's how we start. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, our previous conversations. Yeah. We're, <laughs> we're we're not any better, so. <laughs> oh, they really were not. Um, and in case you don't know or uh, never met Dave before, um, over there, Spiked Rose Red or Dave, that is um, an old friend of mine and an even older friend of Mike's from forever ago. So um, uh, yeah, he's an old friend. He actually was on this channel once before a long while ago playing um, a, uh, what were you, a water genocide, I believe? Yeah, it was a wire genocide. I'm part of the I'm part of the deeper Dalric lore. <laughs> Expanded universe. Yeah, the expanded universe. You, have, you have to read the novels to actually to know to know anything. About I at it. least got the footnotes of the background story. He like yeah, ran yeah, me through if, it. If, if you if you know details on my life, you're like a super oh. fan. I forgot to get my drink. You keep going. Your unprofessional GM is going to get his water. Oh, well, that's <laughs> perfectly fine. Enjoy your yeah, water. Go, go, go get your sippy cup. Yeah, so it was uh, it was actually the first ever stream that I did over here rather than on Lost Initiative. I did, um, uh, and uh, Dave was a part of it forever, forever ago before we started the Eberron one. So uh, that one, the, there was never recordings and the VODs were not saved because I didn't know what I was doing. So <laughs> there was no record of it. So you're going on my word. I'm just trying to you know, launch his career. I'm a community starter, you know, oh. but I'm famously, you know, I, br I, br I bring in the views. There you go. Nice. All right, so um, <clears throat> waiting on Mike. This feels pretty typical, doesn't it? Well, I can't possibly say. Let's go into the uh, what kind of campaign we're going to be playing today. So the game is actually going to be a 1950s noir type setting. So um, by that, I mean the um, the world is going to be taking place in the 50s. I believe it's going to be taking place in New York City. Um, I believe we're going to be doing some sort of investigative stuff. However, Mike was actually pretty, um, he kept it pretty much to himself how it was all going to play out so i guess we'll see how he does it um when he gets it's back it's a mystery here, so. it's a noir yeah. mystery it's noir so um yeah, we I all have different types of characters that was the realm yeah don't worry i'm here there he is all right hello okay right, cool take it away so and also oh. i almost accidentally made the exact same character as david so that was interesting <laughs> Well, that yeah. Well, to be honest, your characters sound a lot kookier than mine. You sound you sound like you had a much more <laughs> yeah. character. Yeah. Mine, yeah. But you, you uh, it was like something with supernatural. It was like a like a necromancer or something. Yeah. Well, I wanted to be like a morgue doctor that, like, you know, um, a forensics practitioner type of person who basically like she has a phobia of be of like dying, so she like resurrects like the dead and talks to them to like kind of work through like life and death and stuff like that which is really fucking cool but then they're like they're like oh dave's playing a doctor and i was like oh shit <laughs> <laughs> so when well, you said resurrect did you were you like stringing up skeletons on like ropes and like talking to them or, like, no i think she means literally no, resurrected. like you know you just oh. like when you're working on them you know like just wake them up talk to them a little bit <laughs> just just wake them up <laughs> Uh, like, Promethean creation rules, I would assume. I have like this whole bat. I spent five hours making this character. I'm like, I'm gonna play her at some point. Someday. No, that sounds like a great character concept <laughs> for like a, a longer, like a longer, more long term World of Darkness campaign. Yeah, a lot of fun character exploration. Also, Dave was like, Your picture on Roll20 looks so different. I was like, Yeah, this this isn't what I normally look like. <laughs> 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 That's great. <laughs> He's like, how long ago was that? <laughs> well, no, it's just I, you meet a person in costume for the first time you meet them. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like, oh, okay. Uh, all right, so Mike, go ahead, take it away with the, yeah, uh, the okay, setting. Cool. So uh, a couple of prefaces before we get started. Um, stuff that I've already told you guys, but I'll tell the viewers as well. Uh, just so you know, this is going to be about a three-episode arc is, is the plan. Um, anywhere between two and four hours, basically at each session i have an idea is where i want it to end and if that ends before four hours then it's great if it ends slightly after four hours around four hours also fine um it's gonna be taking place in the 1950s new york which we'll get into here uh and i think that's everything i wanted to give them a heads up on so i think that's good 
Anything you you needed to tell him, Scott? Or are we good to actually start playing? No, I'm good to get going and uh, meeting all the characters because we know we're a little right. bit of, a little little so, wonky. Before we lay the scene before the four of you, let's actually go person to person. I want you to describe your characters, their names, and their general history, uh, whether you know each other or not. Um, and then we'll go from there. We'll go ahead and start with Scott, and uh, we'll work our way around the room. So, Scott, who is your character's name? What's he look like? What's his what's his deal? Awesome. His name is Donald Harding, but let's be serious. He goes by Moose. Uh, Moose is a typical knucklehead. You know what I mean? He's one of those, like, he went to school, um, but, I mean, school was just really one good thing for him. It was good for lunch money. I mean, there were a bunch of them point dexters and nerds and dweebs and stuff that I can just, you know, I give them a knuckle sandwich if they didn't want to give me their money. And I, uh, I got my, uh, I got my money, and that's all that mattered. Uh, he dropped out of so school. you're a bully. You're no, a jerk. no, no, he was an yeah. entrepreneur. He was an entrepreneur. Uh, he dropped out of- I'm not a bully, I'm an entrepreneur. Dude, you have a specialty <laughs> in scaring nerds. Shh, 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 shh. I also have a vice, but I haven't decided a virtue because I was like, how is this man virtuous? So anyways, um, so uh, what was I saying? The uh, After he dropped out of school, he kind of like joined up with the local not so good people. And uh, unfortunately, he's too stupid to really rise above the ranks. So he's kind of like a Rocco, but you know, uh, way dumber and uh, way beefier. So Rocco meets Rocky, if you get the references. All right. No, I, I got you. Uh, so you're a meathead, sounds great. Dave, what about you? What's your character name? All right, so my character's name is Constantine Leone. Uh, he is a mob doctor, that is his concept. I put max stats and status and the general idea is that uh, any time where he works is considered neutral ground. He holds a lot of respect from organized crime. And is basically his his mantra is that he just wants to help people. And he doesn't, and he's like, he let, let society decide whether like these people are good or bad. He just uh, takes a very like direct approach. Uh, he has a whole reason for that, which I don't know if we'll get into because it's a short, so I'm not gonna go into yeah. it here. But uh, yeah, so just that uh, he wears, you know, wears a, a fancy suit, a clean cut looking guy. Sweet, easy enough. All right, Maggie, hit me with your character. Ooh, I am Deborah Westwood. Should I tell them the other part of that, or do That's we, up to you. We, should we let that come out in story? It's a, I'm gonna leave it up to you. We'll let it come out in story if if you will you find a way to put one. that. Okay, so um, I'm Deborah Westwood, and I am an independent journalist. And you know, in the 1950s, it's hard being a journalist as a woman. So. Yeah. You'll learn things as we go through here. Uh, her virtue is justice and her vice is pride. Uh, she's kind of always trying to like do the right thing and like get the story told and find the truth, you know? So like that's her thing. Um, and she's kind of prideful with, about it. Um, she's young, 22, but you know, everyone around keeps saying that she needs to find a husband and get married and have kids, but she Hey, you really legs, like what do you say? I'm sorry. Being alone with her cats. <laughs> um, I wonder why. <laughs> how, how many? How many cats does she have? Important question. I didn't put a number on it. Oh. Uh, you, bet, you bit her right now. D10. Oh, here. It's how many D10. 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 How many cats? D10. I didn't say two. I didn't say two. How about a D20 cats? Have, okay. Just, D, or, just roll D20. Roll D20. <laughs> roll D20. D20. Okay. D20 so cats. I mean, the character's gonna this be how many cats she has. I don't know. Oh God. Six. Oh, that's, that's uh, I was hoping it was gonna be like a crazy number. That's okay. average crazy cat lady. Yeah, that's average <laughs> crazy cat lady. So oh. I have six cats. I'll come up with their names, um, I guess, because now I have six of them. All right, take so your time. We'll I'll, I'll tell I'll tell you what they look like and what their names are at some We're, point. You know what? Here's here's the best part about these six cats. However many die determines the difficulty of how hard this whole adventure was. What? Mathis, you're gonna kill my cat? I'm Wait, saying, what? I'm saying the cats could die, and the more that die, the more difficult the campaign ends up being. So, oh so, so gosh. when you're when you're choosing your difficulty, you choose it by cap death. So that yes, you, you raise the bar up. How many cats? It's very, it's very internet savvy, I would think. Okay. The, cat, the internet so, loves cats, so if you kill more of them, it's gonna be more difficult. So, so Mike, how's that cat doing outside? Uh, he still comes around. <laughs> He's still alive! <laughs> okay, okay. So so that one's not too difficult, I guess. Right. <laughs> Did you ever capture it? I can't. I keep trying. I can't. The little bastard keeps setting off the trap. 
Uh, all right, all right. So okay. you have six cats. Um, you start naming I them. will go on. I'm sorry. We got deterred by cats. I mean, <laughs> fine. As you do on the internet. Right. Um, she's super witty, um, very manipulative. Uh, she has like very high, um, like, academic and investigation skills. She's pretty stealthy, kind of can get into places uh, very easily. Um, she's kind of uh, like intimidating a little bit because she's a little aggressive, um, persuasive, and she's got a lot of uh, deception in her. And my specializations are investigation crime and stealth hidden in plain sight and a persuasion sweet talking. And that's kind of that's that's my character. She, I guess, I can talk a little bit about what she looks like too. Um, she's kind of like average when it comes to looks. She's not like super attractive or anything of that sort. She just looks blends in kind of with your day to day lady. Um, she has like a satchel with notebooks and like sticky notes and pencils and pens and co a confidential like information packet and uh, a pack of a Philip Morris cigarettes and an ID and a wallet in there. Does she wear a dress or pants? She does wear a dress begrud begrudgingly, like, cause she knows she has to keep appearances on. She's at least she, she knows like socially that's what she needs to do. But if she had the choice, she would just wear a suit, like a dress pants suit, but. She knows. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Uh, and now, Ollie. All right. I'm playing Thomas Armstrong Jones. He is British. Uh, <laughs> photographer from. Are you, uh, are you from saying Maryland. you can't do a, a U.S. accent? No, he's doing uh, a British he's, accent he's, right he's, now. Yeah, yeah, I thought he was doing that accent. He was just pretending to oh, We right. discussed this. He's in character. Do an English accent. It was too dangerous. <laughs> do, it, do an English accent for us. Say. Um, by golly, I really like this. You, it depends what kind of accent, because he <laughs> would say, by golly, I really like this. He's, no, that is not, not American at all. Well, you said I'm not trying American, I was doing British. American's oh. easy. Fuck, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> he is a photographer. He takes okay. pictures. He's, he specializes in gritty realism, which is why he went to America, because what else is more real <laughs> in America and taking pictures of uh, drunkards? And uh, what do you think of us? <laughs> what the heck? Also, <laughs> I've seen your drunkards. I've been to Leicester, and I know what it's like. Oh. It is disgusting. I went to uni in Leicester. You're right. <laughs> you're you're, you're probably going to get someone upset just for the fact that you're, I you're coming saw to America. vomit, like, every five <laughs> feet I walk. <laughs> just vomit all the time. Just, just vomit everywhere. It's a uni town in, in England. It's it's a good place to grow up. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he, he takes photos. He's good at uh, talking to people and and being slightly smart. He looks, you know, uh, I mean, he, he'll he'll probably stand out because he, he would look in place in England because he's wearing a suit, but he'll, he probably won't uh, look in place here. Uh, fairly normal looking guy with sort of blondish hair and uh, he probably has a camera on him at all times because that's his thing. A very fancy camera or? Well, it's the 50s, so yes. Okay. Got that light bulb in it. Got the light. It, it, if you're carrying it around, it's pretty fancy. Okay. It hangs, I'm assuming it hangs around your neck by yeah. your like, stomach. Like, put it this way, in the 1950s, for those of you who don't know the 1950s that well, like television, this is when television started booming and like printing paper and like, like journalism, newspaper stuff like started like to great, like, going down in, in, in that realm. And then also TV started towards the end of the 50s started becoming more of an entertainment thing, whereas it like started as like news and right. commercial. Yeah, my, my character is very based on the idea that this was the first time that like photography became not just art of like a portrait. Right, right. That's, that's my whole character's idea. It, it's, cool. it's, but it's all drunkards for some reason. That's, that's it's like, just, he enjoys it. He also I gets feel like my character might know your character. Like, taking might. some photos for gonna, like some of the. How, the how many dots written. in fame do you have, photographer? Man? Uh, I have two fame, so you know. How much fame do you have, uh, journalist girl? So, my character <laughs> doesn't have fame, but. So she's like the blogger of the 50s. <laughs> the other. Well, <laughs> it's like, how is he? So. <laughs> 
Because there's more to the story. You can't, I can't divulge okay, okay. it right now. All right, okay. cool. Okay. So let's, yeah. I, I do have to say one more thing, then Mike, please take the reins in. Uh, everybody, please do me a favor. Um, settings wheel, top right hand corner, click that, turn on, automatically roll 3D dice and enable 3D dice. It allows the dice to roll on the screen. And Mike, please take it away. <clears throat> gotcha. Sorry, just making sure that it checks off. Cool. All right. So actually, an interesting, an interesting topic of who knows who. Welcome to 1951 New York City. Some unknown street and some unknown suburb mixed in uh, to New York City. It is a typical Tuesday night, uh, somewhere a little after 10 o'clock, so relatively late. Yeah, you can still hear cars honking outside. Um, the, the street lights are uh, through the fog, dimly lighting an orange hue amongst the roads just outside. And due to road construction, uh, a few of you are getting home a little later than normal. The four of you all live in the same apartment building. You live in Greenland Heights, uh, a nice tall apartment building here in New York City. Uh, nothing amazing. It doesn't look like the bricks are falling apart and the windows are smashed and there's all kinds of problems with the building, but it's also not a luxury apartment building in any stretch. This is not uh, something that anybody would drive by and, and look at and say, oh God, I wish I lived there. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty nondescript mo for the most part. And the four of you have come across one another occasionally in the past. Uh, once a week, there is a woman who, who uh, has an apartment of her own on the, uh, on the sixth floor who runs a weekly poker game, who thoroughly enjoys getting a few of the people that she knows within the apartment together to play poker. You four are some of those people that she likes to get to have poker games together. Now, I'm sure some of you have played together before. Maybe all four of you have played together before. I'll, I'll leave that up to you. Uh, but this particular night, the four of you and her, uh, her name is Janice, will be playing poker together. Now, poker usually takes place in a common room, um, but she's gonna be doing it in her own apartment tonight. And uh, usually it starts around seven or eight, but because again, road construction that is happening, uh, it's starting later for her and for a few of you as you guys get home from whatever odd jobs you guys are doing. But you all had planned that poker tonight was gonna be the activity of choice for the most of you. Um, as you all kind of file into her apartment one at a time, she's just sitting there, uh, kind of- What's got your her name again? Janice. Janice, okay. She's sitting at a, a nice little poker table. Uh, she's got a stack of cards and some chips, uh, poker chips, not like crunchy chips. Uh, and particularly when you walk in, uh, Maggie, your character, Deborah, walks in, she actually flicks open a box of Marlboros as she kind of leans back in the chair. The chair makes a pretty audible squeaking noise and just kind of gestures up the box of Marlboros to you for you to take one if you'd like. Oh yeah, she, um, she takes one for sure. Do the three of you, the other three smoke at all? She would offer one to those she knows. I, 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 I smoke. Absolutely. Okay, so the four, welcome to the 50s. Everybody's smoking. Everybody's um, smoking. You know, so I, was, actually, I was like looking at 1950s ads the other day, like yesterday as inspiration. And I was like dying of laughter. Like there's this one with this little boy and he's like got a plate of like sticks of butter. And this is a person. This is not like a drawing of somebody. And he's I got like a fork with a stick and he's like eating it. And they're like healthy, healthy eating. And then they're like, lubricate your veins and arteries. And I'm like, what? <laughs> uh, That's why we have you. regulations. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on. So as each one of you files in, then she offers the same. She'll she'll pop open one, like a cigarette sticks out and she'll offer it to the four of you. And if you don't have a light, she offers herself, uh, she offers hers to light with a match. I, I smoke and I go, <coughs> I'm totally cool with this. <laughs> <laughs> she smiles uh, and chuckles Bleep. a little bit. At that, as great, uh, she smiles as, I'm at, glad as everyone does this. <laughs> uh, and then eventually, as the four of you come in, she just kind of mo gestures like, "Hey, could you just lock the door behind you?" Just it, we're all, only the five of us tonight. She pops a cigarette in her mouth and pulls it out of the pack, lights it with a match, takes a deep drag. <sighs> now I'm ready, and she gestures for the four the four of you to take a seat. She actually looks at the four of you and says. Now I played poker with the four of you before, but have you played poker with each other? I look around the table and be like, I think so. I am eyeing um, Deborah, and I'm like, I'd remember. <laughs> yes, I remember you, Moose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't, you sound like you just said something, Scott, and I didn't hear you. D just the, the lewd comment. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> so I, uh, yeah, sorry. That's fine. 
And uh, so you said you remember Ollie and Maggie. Do your character say anything to say like if she, it's up to you? Basically, I'm letting you. Do you guys have you guys all play poker together all at once or just parts? I like the idea of it, uh, that me and Deborah have have hung out, but I think the other two maybe not. So the yeah, Dave and Scott hung that. out. Maggie and Ollie has hung out, but never together. Yeah, I sure. Never, that's, 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 never. Sure. I never remember who Dave's character is. I'm, I'm like, I'm like so literally every, <laughs> every time. Game, I'm like, yeah, good to meet you. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> He doesn't remember me and I'm fine with that. Yeah, I'm like, good to meet you. <laughs> it's a suit. Are you good at poker? No, I'm I'm dumb. I mean, <laughs> we're talking, it, intelligence is one. That's like below average. It's two is average. Anything underneath that, you're bad. I, I have one intelligence, one dex, so that's, one that's manipulation. Like I'm dumb. Poker, yeah, I'm dumb. <laughs> that my, is why Dave loves playing poker. My wits, my wits like, are two. I'm dumb. Makes money. <laughs> yeah. So Janice actually stands up and she's in kind of like a, I guess you would call it like a, like a, a smock or a frock. Like it's kind of like what, basically the kind of thing Maggie's wearing right now. Like it's a, a dress. A dress. <laughs> I guess it's, it's a smock or a frock. Then, which is, uh, that is a word. Those exist. It's I'm a not... piece of cut cloth you wrap on your around your body. Is it? Um, I don't know. You might be right. I, I don't speak whatever that is. A, sm a smock a, is a thing. A frock is a dress. That's, that's right, what well, A frock says. is a dress, right? I don't know. A frock, fro a frock is just an uh, old-fashioned way of saying like a dress. Perfect. Yeah, so I think exactly frock is Tune in going. next week for us giving clothing lessons to Mathis. <laughs> <laughs> We're always dead on right. Those are lessons. You're That's good. the right word. You can you wear a smock I don't over think your frock. smock was right, but I think a dress, oh, frock is right. <laughs> Uh, so she gets up and actually walks over to her radio that was playing and to give you an idea of what the room looks like It's a relatively most apartments are the kind of laid out the same in this building. It's you when you walk in It's a nice big living room. She has one of those Gaudy ugly like orange brown and white rugs underneath the table. Uh, she's got those like old ass like Lazy boy kind of comfy chairs. She's got two of those in each corner one tiny little love seat off against the wall near the door walk into a walk-in kitchen and then off to the uh, out is like a one bedroom and a bathroom kind of attached out that way. Very, very small, uh, not a lot decorating it. She doesn't have a TV. Uh, I'm sure maybe Dave has a TV out of the four of you. Um, Maggie might as well. Ollie, maybe. Scott, probably not, would be my guess. But she doesn't have a TV at all. I took one. Um, <coughs> you have a TV? You Oh, you stole a TV, gotcha. I took one. Uh, yeah, you took one, got it. Uh, she gets up, turns the radio. The clicking of her heels against uh, when she leaves the rug under the hardwood floor, uh, very audible in in this relatively sparsely decorated apartment. She makes her way back, sits in the chair, takes out the cards and starts shuffling. She looks to the four of you, says, all right, y'all bring your money. I asked, uh, it's gonna be $10 total. We're gonna do $2 Whoa. ante throughout the night. No, $2 ante throughout the night with $10 cap. Um, and you, you may tap out as you wish. He looks, she looks to Moose and she's like, and uh, I hope as always you never tap out Moose. And she says that with a smile. <laughs> she hitting a Moose? He's, he's no. a sucker. He, he goes for the hitting on, even though it's insincere and, uh, and she just takes his money, but he doesn't or, mind. I thought, I thought he was referenced because you're a boxer and you know, you don't tap out. I do fight. I think that might have been it, but he might have. Also, she was saying that said. he might have taken it. It works the other on way. so many levels. <laughs> the level I was going on is that he's too stupid to ever win oh. money, and so he likes to just play until he's out, yeah. and she usually makes some. You know that kind of thing. Okay, so, cool. All right, so she starts actually dealing off the cards, and we're gonna play a little poker just to to get you guys started up here. So, right. um, dice pool for for this particular is gonna be manipulation plus subterfuge. Uh, and if you'd like to try and cheat and bluff, that's always an option, depending on how well you roll. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, if you'd like to cheat or bluff, let me know, and I'll let you know what you need to roll for that. Definitely will. Okay, cool. Um, is anybody not going to cheat or bluff? Or who's going gonna... to cheat or bluff? You're not going to cheat or bluff. Ollie, are you going to cheat? No. Okay. No cheating Straight on the cheater. Cheater. Scott, just Unless, I mean, maybe later down the line, but not right now. I mean, not I'm the person to notice someone else cheat. I'm not, no, 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 no. Oh, yeah. Bluffing is not cheating. Are we wait? Are we playing like hold'em? Are we playing like five card stud? Uh, you're by playing five card stud. Okay, cool. So bluffing is not as big of a deal. I'm still gonna be terrible at it. So that's fine. Well, that's the subterfuge uh, part of it, I think. So yeah, yeah. no, if you're gonna bluff, what I'm gonna have you do is I'm actually gonna have Scott first roll a, uh, a manipulation plus subterfuge roll, yeah. and depending on how well you do, we'll give you an extra bonus dice on your actual roll. Okay. Okay. Uh, manipulation. Subterfuge. Cool. I'm ready. You ready? Roll? Yeah, I'm gonna need to roll because then the other three are gonna make a roll. So cool. Awesome. Here we go. 
Oh, hello. There we go. <laughs> great, yeah. you did really great. Uh, can you, the three of you, make intelligence plus empathy rolls for me, please? Okay. Intelligence. Intelligence. So the cards are being dealt. You all get your hand as a, uh, as you as you you do, and I'm curious matter. what Scott's bluff is on this particular hand. Does he, does he just be like, oh boy, heck yeah? I don't <laughs> notice. <laughs> You do oh not notice, boy. but he, he got zero success. So yeah, all right, sweet. Holy what shit. did I get dealt? What did I get <laughs> dealt? Crap, like? What? <laughs> okay, so you get no you get no bonuses on your bluff. However, the three uh, two out of the three of them tell you're trying to bluff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like you're bluffing so bad it's obvious, but yeah. the reporter for some reason can't pick up on it. She's a girl, not good at cards. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I don't do the empathy thing, okay? <laughs> um, so, so uh, you, did you say you wanted to know how I bluffed? Yeah, I'm curious. I'm curious if you had in mind how your character was bluffing. Absolutely. I'm gonna look down at my cards and be like, Whew, "I'm off to a good start here. This is great. I can't believe I'm gonna win this already. This is great." <laughs> <laughs> With that, that's, that's but your that. character looks really nervous while he says that. <laughs> <laughs> It takes quicker drags I from like the series. I like to imagine like, that actually it's not because I didn't notice. It's because I don't care. It's fine too. Me. So it's bad at empathy, good at apathy. Understood. <laughs> <laughs> Janice is just, she takes a, she lights, uh, takes another drag from her cigarette. She just smirks. She goes, I bet you have the best hand you've ever had. It breathes out. Everybody okay. go ahead and make manipulation plus subterfuge rolls, please. Okay. Yeah, that's annoying. Who does that? Oh. oh, yeah. Four successes, five successes, and zero. Wait, who okay. got five? That was, that oh, was, no, that that was, was the wrong one. Oh, yeah. So Maggie just, uh, yeah, just and then I've, I've got to roll us. my. Sweeps us. Well, 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 she this is the thing. One. We're too busy paying attention to Moose, and she's just actually. Well, well I mean, look, right. look at her. She has a four and a three. She, this is her yeah. speciality. Yeah, this is my speciality. <laughs> so, you know, Moose says that. Janice retorts and takes a drag of her cigarette. Maggie, uh, or Deborah doesn't say anything. She keeps her eyes on her cards. She doesn't seem to either care or pay attention to whatever Moose is doing. Meanwhile, the three others are kind of eyeing Moose down like, this is going to be easy money. You start playing your cards and uh, almost without hesitation, Deborah looks up from her cards. So everybody has taken care of their redraws and the like and just slaps down a full house. Goddamn. Full house. <laughs> Doesn't come anywhere near. Uh, Janice kind of plops her cards down. She's like, ain't been, I got nothing better than that. Mm. Very. <laughs> just uh, <laughs> my character just like kind of like, stays stone faced. It's just like a uh, real fun game. Like I feel <laughs> yes. like giving Deborah like an eye. <laughs> yes, bravo, bravo indeed. I think you cheated there, uh, there, there, Debbie. I think I'm gonna have to check your pockets. No, mo no Moose, <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> Moose, Janice looks over to you. Now, Janice is a very plain woman. I probably should have explained. Very plain woman, uh, in her early 50s, um, has smoked her fair share of cigarettes just because of, you could tell with her voice. Uh, very roar, uh, very rough, very coarse. And she looks up after that and she's like, if she turns you down, I got a big old bed. Oh, you want to, uh, all right, I can get busy. I can do this. Please, please, can the two of you at least wait until after the game? Oh, and he's all oh, yours, darling. Listen here, you little dweeb. What are, what are you from, Australia or something? I'm not a criminal, if that's what you're trying to say. <laughs> I, you're getting between me and those sheets. That sounds like a criminal to me. Do I need to like knock your block off? Are we? Here Thomas to... like actually leans back in the chair and just looks Moose up and down very slowly. You in, like in what the... you see, you don't you? Moose, we came here to play poker. Is that why? Is that why you came? That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to play poker. Hey, come on, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, that's good. <laughs> Moose is the epitome of everything I hate. <laughs> <laughs> she actually looks Deborah over. is just like, in her head, who the fuck invited this guy? <laughs> <laughs> so, so noticing that she's looking, he's he's like, hey, listen, she said it's a big bed. If you know what I'm talking about, legs. <laughs> I'm sorry, Janice. I don't think I can endure this any longer. My character's she ready to 
and step between them if necessary. <laughs> <laughs> Janice actually My character tries back. to sit you back that. Janice leans back, takes a drag from her cigarette, and she's like, don't listen to his words. Just watch his money. It's all that matters. And if you're serious, Moose, about coming in, uh, maybe having a little fun after the game, Thomas over there's got a camera. Ain't never used one of them before. He's like legitimately taken aback for us because that's like that's like very forward. And he's like oh, yeah. legitimately taken aback for a sec, and he's immediately throwing like, grabbing more cards. Yeah. And he's like, like come hey, on, girl. let's do the next hand. <laughs> All right, anybody want to cheat or bluff on this particular of hand? <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody else want to cheat or bluff on this hand? Well, I mean, cheating. I mean, bluffing is just part of the game. I don't know if it's a choice. Depends on my hand. You know what? Fuck it. I'll bluff. <laughs> Well, you can get a shit hand, and if you get really good bluff rolls, you're going to get bonus dice on your actual... Sure, what's, what's the bluff? Uh, bluff is <sighs> manipulation and subterfuge. No! You know what I have? I, I'm supposed to be rolling a chance die. My last two rolls, so i got to uh, re-roll this one. I didn't roll a chance die last time. Huh. Okay. Are we yeah, rolling for our actual rolls now? Okay. Now I failed. Uh, no, I think they're all bluffing first right now. Oh, they're all bluffing. You they're guys all are bluffing. all bluffing. Damn, cheating gonna bluff their cheating. hands. They're all going to bluff their hands. Well, they're all, they're all going to have a playing world of darkness. We're getting used to right. being shady. Nobody's actually outright trying to cheat yet, though. That's which is smart. Like that's that's okay. well, not smart. Oh wait, wait. Okay. this is just for like this isn't. I thought this was cheating. Okay, so what we got to do? Now, no, no. I'm totally difference. down with bluffing. Because that's Feel free part to roll of your bluff then. Manipulation okay. plus subterfuge. All right. And then we're gonna go through each one of you real quick and uh, two successes. Right. Okay, Moose, you have no successes. Everybody sees through your shit. Uh, everybody feel free to roll a, um, the intelligence plus empathy roll for Ollie's character. So Ollie, don't roll. Intelligence and empathy? Do I have to roll? Do you have oh, you, empathy? Yeah, I'm not going to do well. Intelligence? Uh, no, I'm just going to, okay. But I'll try. It, I'll chance yeah. die. There's, there's no point yeah. in not rolling. Zero. Zero. And <gasps> zero. zero. Okay, so Ollie, you're going to get two bonus dice on your next actual poker roll. Oh, um, so if someone you, sees it, then you get, don't get. Then the you thing. lose the bonuses, correct? Oh, All right, now that's everybody true. do this. Now everybody do the same thing. Intelligence plus empathy on Maggie's character. So Maggie, don't roll anything. Everybody okay. else is gonna roll. Can we just play poker the whole three sessions? Yeah, I'm kind of <laughs> into this. Uh, you got one success. Constantine sees through you to the point where you lose all your bonuses. You won't get any bonuses. And, and I'm a total dick, and I just I just tell the rest of the table. <laughs> <You're> lying. <laughs> Uh, and then the, and did anybody else get any successes? No. Constantine Wait. Oh, did, I right? did, I did, I got yeah. one. So everybody but Dave, go ahead and roll your intelligence plus empathy roll. Uh, uh, just someone needs to meet a one and you and negate. So the only one getting a bonus here is uh, Ollie on So close. close. You were so close. close. <laughs> you were close. Okay. No cigar. Manipulation plus subterfuge. Pretty pleased, everybody. I gotta get that back out here. So if you... Whoa, I did not need to roll 4d120. Right. Manipulation plus subterfuge. Oh, it's on intelligence and unclick intelligence. Click oh, subterfuge. And go. Well, sometimes it like doesn't unclick. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to learn how to navigate. Hey! You got a success? <laughs> oh, I got a success! We, we got a, we got a hey! All right. Well, She's hold up. So many oh, dice! Man, <laughs> Ollie, so you rolled with the two. So uh, it's going to be a split pot between Constantine and Ollie. So. Fair game. Fair game. All right, all right. Now, eight more eight more rounds. Let's go. I need to be clear, though. I need to be clear. The reason why I'm growing good into my subterfuge is because I didn't realize what cards were in my hands. I was too busy being distracted by something else. So I it. thought I was Promise bluffing of... one way. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to get a sneak peek of the bedroom, and so I thought my card said something different, just to be clear. <laughs> of course, of course. Janice, uh, finishing up her cigarette, says, all right, I got one more hand in me, and then I got to go take care of getting you guys snacks. Usually I have snacks laid out by now, but traffic and... Is this just the kind of person Janice is? Like, just like yeah. she's a complete, like, like is this, is this like her sense of humor, or is this like surprising us? Uh, this is, well, if you've played with, um, We've, this is kind of who she is. This is okay. kind of who she is. She's very okay. rough around the edges. Doesn't seem to give a shit about anything. All right. Okay. Uh, so we're all, okay. Then uh, that's then what I like about cool. Janice. That's She's what I'm not saying. like yeah. the other that's girls. Like no, no. If it was off and weird to you, I would have. I would have told you. But for her, she's a very like loves to smoke, loves to gamble. Like it's, fair, it's a fair question because that is very not. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I get you. I get you. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. No, this is very much who she is. So, so, um, so we come for the poker. We stay for Janice. <laughs> and yeah. the money, if you make any. 
All right. But yeah, but you're rich anyway, so you probably don't need it. Um, you know, let that joke just go. So yeah, Janice at the last drag of her last uh, the cigarette she was smoking. She says, "I got one more round of me, and I got to go get you the beers and snacks that I always got." Uh, so if you would, uh, uh, if you'd like, start dealing out cards. Does anybody want to bluff or cheat on this last hand before she walks away? Uh, yeah, sure, why not? Bluff, you sure, why not? Well. Uh, let's like you do. Are we ever really gonna write a re or do a reaction? Everyone's gonna bluff and everyone's gonna react. It'll just be a bluff, and then who gets bonuses and who doesn't. Okay, okay. So what what is it again? Manipulation uh, for, subterfuge, right? Yeah, manipulation subterfuge for bluffing. Okay. That's what poker's all about. Okay. And then so we got MVP. two successes, so I need uh, four ba uh, two batches of rolls. So one against Maggie. Maggie, don't roll. Uh, and again, to de determine it, intelligence plus empathy. Okay. <coughs> Maggie. Intelligence Kay. and empathy. One second. Ollie's negated her bonus. Oh, yeah, you it. It. Now everybody roll against uh, Dave's character, Constantine Leone. She kind of touches her glasses a lot. And that kind of gives it away. Town. Like, All right. There man, you go. I'm really good at finding cheetahs. Yeah. All right, yeah, you, you blow cool. me out. That's why you're a photographer. All right. So oh, you're no a PI. Gets... Everybody make a naked roll, manipulation plus subterfuge. Naked roll? Naked roll. That's what's happening with Janice later. <laughs> hey, yo. Hey, yo. All right, no bonus. Still I'm got a one. I love rolling all these zeros. Not enough. Janice, in a in a fit of, of frustration, just angrily puts out her cigarette into the ashtray that's sitting uh, by a little nightstand behind her. She reaches behind, puts it out, and she just kind of throws the cards in the ground. She's like, "Fuck it, take it, doctor. I'm gonna go get the goddamn food." And she kind of gets up in a huff, and she's like, "I'll be back in a few minutes. Feel free to play another hand if you want. I'll be back." And right. she walks off, uh, leaves her apartment, and heads to uh, one of the. Com she lets you know she's heading to one of the common rooms, uh, the closest one where she can grab some some food and snacks and stuff that she's okay. Got there. So, if the four of you'd like to do anything, role play, interact, or you know, play more cards. You're welcome to, or I can just. Skip. I I why well, I, I say we play more cards, but I don't need to. Roll. Yeah, you don't need to roll. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I fine. definitely pick up and like, Constantine, you're a doctor. You absolutely don't look the type. <laughs> He says, he, he, I, I kind of laugh. It's like, I don't get that almost ever. I always, because he, he comes off as very clean cut. Like he looks like, I mean, generic white guy. Like, <laughs> generic white guy. I mean, he looks the exact type who could be a doctor. So I, I laugh at that. It's like, I actually do not hear that quite often. Yeah, Deborah looks over at uh, him and is like, I don't know. He kind of looks like a doctor to me. Yeah, so well, we must people... just have different doctors overseas. Yes. Whew. That, uh, that Deborah. Janice. <laughs> Deborah's Freudian name. Slip. Freudian I'm, slip. I'm Janice. Deborah. That's her. Oh, Janice is a better name. You know, she's just messing with you, friend. What? Well, she's not being serious. She never is being serious when she's like that. First the German guy, now you're going to be messing with me? Do I need to put you in your place too? Moose. You've, you, you've spoken to Janice before, haven't you forgotten? She's played that trick on you every time you, you, you come here. What? No. Usually I get just too a little too drunk and I pass out. This time I'm not going to get too drunk. This time I showed up drunk, so I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Deborah looks at uh, Constantine and directs this towards uh, him and tries to ignore Moose. Oh, so you've been here before. How do you know Janice? Uh... I know Janice for her uh, her wit and her uh, and for the company that she uh, that 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 she gathers in this uh, this room. She's a little bit of a fresh air with some, with most of the women. I uh, no, I said, how do you know her? How do I know her? Well, he says, uh, yeah, well, you know, she she uh, she invited me, and I continued to come because of her wit, and she's a very unique woman. Usually, you need to know someone for them. Yeah, to they, you. she just she invited just, you, just, like. Just, she just met you on the street and according, invited according, you in according, to, according to the game master, she just invites everyone in the apartment building. That's she true. invites those that she likes. Oh. Hold on, whoa, you, oh. made my, you made my head hurt, like some fourth walls or something. Oh, okay. I'm but there sorry. does not seem I, to be- I, I, th no. I thought she just invites everyone. Oh. No, she like, invites those she likes, though she does, there doesn't seem to be rhyme or reason as to those that she likes. Oh. As you can oh. tell, the four of you are very different, but she plays poker with all four of you often enough. Oh, uh, she said, um, so it's up to you. She, she, you so, so he says, uh, he kind of just gives a wry smile. It's like, I know her through a professional contact, you could say. And uh, Professional been... sense. Is that yeah. what you just said? Yes. Whoa, the professional you, contact. Are you saying well, she's so, professional? And, and, he at, and I stopped Moose before he even talks. We're doctoring. 
for doctoring. Oh. oh. I was going to say. You're her, you're her doctor. I was going to say moose don't yeah. pay. Well, I wish my doctor would make home visits. Well. Uh, well <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of like. The doctor's like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> Uh, my character looks obviously actually uncomfortable by that because <laughs> you, you, you can see he's like he shifts a little in his chair when you when you when you when you say something like that and he says he, uh, he, it and he pauses for a moment like is there something in the matter uh, uh uh thomas quickly whips his camera out and actually takes a picture of constantine looking very uncomfortable <laughs> <laughs> and uh kind of like happily sits there to himself so what when, was the when question he, that you asked? He says, is there, is there a problem? Oh. No. Just don't find that that happens often. Yes, well. Uh, I, 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 I find that there are a lot of people who need help who don't necessarily have the means to find it. I can agree with that. And with that... Time passes. A lot of time passes, actually. And by a lot of time, I'm talking like... I'm drunk. <laughs> yeah, so Moose is just doesn't have any idea what's going on. Um, but when I say a lot of time, I mean, like, she should have been back in 5 or 10. It's now been 15. 15 minutes or so. And uh, it's starting to get a little worrisome to the point where the th I'm assuming the four of you eventually are like, maybe we should see if she's okay and go see if she's around. Uh, and it's at that moment where maybe one of you opens your mouths to let loose the, the thought of going to check on her or say something to raise concern. Oh, Scott? Yeah, she's right. been she's been taking a while. I'm, go I'm going to go check on her. Now, I'm going to get up and immediately check the bedroom first. <laughs> it's as soon as like your chair, your the wooden chair against the wooden floor creaks off uh, that distinct kind of rumbling noise and you stand, the four of you hear something that Actually, I'm sure that at least three of the four of you are incredibly familiar with. Two loud, distinct gunshots coming from above you. Uh, oh. Quick question, do I, do I have a gun? Did you buy a gun? I mean, we Likely weren't, we, on you. We, we weren't no. told how much money we had. Starting money. We, there is no starting money. Well, There's no starting, starting money. money. That's why I asked if we got anything. I have, resources, I have right? pants, a shirt, and boots. I imagine out of the four of you, two of you might have a gun. I, we I we work for the mob. I, <laughs> I, I, one I planned that my character had a gun, but so, I yeah. you Then I would say yes to Moose and yes to Dave, but probably in your apartments, unless you feel threatened to come into this place every time you play poker. It makes yeah. sense. It's sort of like neutral ground. You don't bring a gun. M Moose grew up in, in like Midwest you know, put it uh, this way. Janice doesn't like it when you bring. That's okay. Fair. Then I wouldn't bring okay. it. Fine, fine. Bring it. So, that's, that's so, fine. so my, so, so at the sound of the gunshot, my, my character will hop to his feet, and instinctively, uh, I'll point to Moose, and I'll, and I'll point, and and I'll point to uh, 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 Deborah, and I'll say, Deborah, stay here. That's funny because I would lazily look up and be like, "Was that a Glock?" <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Oh, I'm not staying here. I'm gonna go see what's going on as well. And she hurries and grabs her, her. Uh, and Thomas, what is Thomas? That's what that's around. Uh, would would watch and see Deborah, and then seeing probably Constantine a bit confused, and like, well, she writes stories. This might be the big break, and then All right. follow it's off. Not the a hook. break. Those are those are fresh gunshots, which means that someone is currently shooting. <laughs> so, um, what ends up happening? Uh, and after you guys are actually kind of clamoring and running around, grabbing whatever you want to do, uh, you know, Deborah grabbing her bag, and Ollie got his camera ready, and Moose being confused and. Uh, Constantine kind of just hopping to action after that was that's probably like a good 10 or 20 seconds since the first two gunshots and then finally a third gunshot fires off right as the apartment door swings open oh no and Janice is actually walking in with an armful of snacks and uh she's got a couple of like beers jammed in there but she looks very confused I'll, I'll rush towards them kind of well, you're okay yeah, you okay? We heard some gunfire. Did you see anything? She actually, when you say uh, did you, we heard some gunfire, she she actually kind of puts the the food on the table, looks up and looks worried. She's like, "No, I I didn't hear any gunfire, but look, I'm I'm sure something's I'm sure I'm doing something wrong or something's off, but I think the elevator is broken." 
Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna, if I have like a pen light, I'm gonna like look into her eyes. Yes, absolutely. You... And I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do an intelligence. Do med- pen lights exist in the fifties? I don't know. I, I, I have some base. <laughs> you well, can walk over and describe. I'm a gonna light. look into her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go, a light bulb. I'll check the elevator. I'll see if it's broken. So is it instinctive? Do you ask for permission? You just kind of like reach for. No, no, her no, eyes? I, no. I like, I, I, I move towards her, and and it's just like, uh, uh, just like keep your eyes open for a moment. Yeah, you should just fight. And uh, you go and examine the eyes looking for dilation and everything actually seems normal. A little more dilated than usual, but that's not necessarily abnormal in terms of like someone who's a little worried or panicked. I take her pulse, like how, is her heart racing? Is it normal beating? Uh, it's a little faster than normal. Nothing like pounding, but it's definitely like she seems nervous. And as you actually, you know, grab her wrist to feel for her pulse, she definitely feels clammy and like a little, um, Sweaty and like a little sticky, you know, ner- nerves and and the like. Again, right. everything that you're t- you're just instinctively as a doctor, you're like, okay, this is all. She seems nervous. She seems nervous. She seems nervous. Okay, so I I, I tell her to like, sit down for a moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, did, did Moose go out the room? Checking the elevator. Sure. Uh, I, I grab her a glass of water. Sure. All right. As water. Um, I'm gonna ch- I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna check the co- I'm gonna check the. Uh... Well, no, no. I was gonna look for Janice, and she's here. Yeah, she's sitting. Uh, so she's sitting in the chair. Moose runs out. Um, I watch and you're... the door. I, I stand yep. by the door. Uh, I just looking down the hallway, both directions, to just wait for Moose to come back. Yep. Um, so Moose, you're, so you're giving her water. The three, well, the three of you are taking care of her, waiting for Moose. And Moose, you went out to do what exactly with the elevator? Check on it. See, I, I'm a mechanic, so you so run over to it funny. and you just press a button. Now yeah. this is the old time elevator with the iron grate in front of it and all that stuff. Um, so you run over to the elevator and you press like four like four five the one above maybe seven sure because you heard yes yeah yeah, yeah. so you hit seven and ding and it arrives i'll press uh, i'll like reach in and like press like the button and kind of like come back out and yeah close you click and drag the gate shut and it clamors and and see if it goes back down uh did you you send it down or you send it up Uh, i'll send send it down to the lobby is is there anything in the elevator nothing dead empty okay no blood, no bodies, nothing, nothing notable whatsoever. Um, so you hit the button and dink. I guess she's crazy. And I'll, I'll turn around and go back in. Okay. And like get, be confused by all the fuss that's going on. But Okay, so ahead. Moose walks in, still kind of drunk and confused looking. Janice is sitting in the chair. You know, Deborah's got her some water. De, uh, Constantine is probably looking her over. Tom is keeping an eye on the door, waiting for you guys to come back. Uh, and you walk in, she's like, did you, did you see the elevator, Moose? Did you see what I'm talking about? We're all looking at Moose. And at this point, she takes out another cigarette, lights it, throws it in her mouth. Huh? All right. The, the elevator, Moose, the elevator. Yeah, oh, good, good, you're smoking. It's good for you. Good, smoke more. <laughs> in the 50s, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Here's some milk of the poppy. Milk of the poppy, right, right. please. Cigarettes will calm you down. Uh-huh. So, yeah. Um, but so, like, so he's, he's like, elevator. it's fine. I, I look to Janice and I say, like, tell us, why did you think the elevator was broken? What do you, wait, what do you, did it go, did it go down and come back up? No problem. Uh, it went up, then down. Can I, can I, can I she's like, no, 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 that doesn't make any sense. And she gets up. It's like, why are we so flustered about an elevator? It's just come with me, dude. I, I she say, like, like shouts and cuts just, you off. I, uh, I, I, I tell her like, calm down. Just show us what you're what you're referring to. Yeah, Deborah follows. She ushers. Now the hallway is pretty wide. When you end, exit the apartment, it actually goes straight ahead, where the elevator at the end of the hall over there also takes a, a, a right and a left. So you're kind of like at the, at the T of like a hallway or at the intersection. So you walk dead straight uh, to the elevator, and she's like, watch, 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 watch. And she presses uh, the button. She hits just a button to call the elevator. I look bored and not paying attention. The elevator comes, she opens the gate, like throws it open as fast as she can. The cigarette almost falling out of her mouth. She it catches it really back. quickly. Oh. And she like steps into the elevator. She's like, you gonna come or no? I'll go in. Yeah, 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 yeah. we go, I'll pile in. Okay. I'm sure well, we should be going in there if you think it's broken. If you wanna stay, you you know what? what you should, one of you should stay actually. I could walk you up the stairs. No, I, that's why it took me so long, cause I took the stairs. <sighs> Debra, stay there. And and she's like, all right, the three the two the three of you come in. She goes in and she presses the lobby. Um, now Scott, do me a favor. Can you make me a retroactive wits plus composure check for me? Retro. 
But it's for something that happened a few seconds ago, I forgot to call on you to make a roll. Wits plus, plus composure. composure. Bam. Are you actively drunk, by the way? I mean... Or it's like cinematic drunk. I would say cinematic drunk. Okay, cool. You know I mean? Make your roll. Cool. Two successes. So you're going to realize this as the elevator starts to kick and go down, and it seems fine. It actually, something, you've only been gone from the elevator for a few seconds, maybe under a minute. You sent the elevator down when you left. Yep. When she called the elevator, it came from up. I actually noticed that. I'm like, you noticed that? At, like, it took you a minute. You got to the elevator. She pressed the button. Maybe just weren't all there. You're, like, confused. She's like, she's crazy. But now you're like, wait a minute. That's, so I'll do, an, I'll do an audible, like, huh. She's like, okay. So on my side, what am I seeing? You are seeing the elevator go down, just as she said she was going to, down okay. to the elevator. Right, and she hit the lobby. She hit lobby. She's down ground floor. Elevator starts to move. And you see it. It says, ding, fourth floor, or fifth floor. Ding, fourth floor. Ding, third floor. Ding, seventh floor. Ding, sixth floor. And now Maggie wow. is where you see the elevator come from the top. Wait. It comes from the top. But, okay. It went bottom and is now coming from the top. W w w without even skipping a beat, my, my, so it went from three to seven? Three to seven. My character slams on the three button. Okay. Like, just like, like that made no sense. Hold on a sec. So the elevator doesn't actually stop. Like, it stops for a second, but then you see Constantine just, like, slam a button, and all of a sudden it kicks back in. Hey, is there uh, uh, something funny here? <laughs> my character says, like, it's, no, it's nothing's, nothing's wrong. Just hold ding. on. No, it's, the thing was going, it went no, no, down, just, and then it came from on, the- hold on. Ding, hold on. ding, fourth floor. Ding, seventh floor. Oh, you. Ding. My character, like, my character, when that happens, he's like, whoa. Like, what? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, so Maggie, you see it again uh, once, you, once you're good. So you see the elevator again go down and then co come back from the top. When it stops, I throw open the gate and I charge down the stairs. I, I head towards the stairs. My character's okay. like, my character's like, he's never acted this unhinged before. Where and, is the elevator? Like, is it staying in that spot where they are right now? Yeah, so you saw it go down and come back. You saw yeah. it go down and then come from the, the top. Then yeah. Constantine, before the gate even had a chance to open, you could see him through the gate. Before I had a chance to open, Constantine slammed the button. They went back down and then it came from the top again. And then Constantine threw the gate open and went sprinting by you. He went sprinting by me? Yeah. Say, say, saying out loud, it's like, it's like that, that's impossible. That's impossible. What? What's in? What's the, the he thing he does, he does, he does is, and now Janice is like, with you freaking out and running, she starts freaking out. And she's like, I told you, I told you, I told you. And she like starts running out of the elevator as well to chase whoa, after. Whoa, Constantine. someone get her a sedative. We lost our doctor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? I'll actually say to to uh, Ollie and um, Ollie, sorry, to Thomas Jamie. and uh, Deborah. There's a perfectly rational explanation. I'm, all of it. You guys, that. wait, are they by me now? I, I'm yeah. so confused because yeah, yeah, they were. On, they, I thought they were in the elevator when they were. You were right, and you were right outside the elevator waiting for it. Gate open. Constantine ran by you. The doctor. The other three stayed in the elevator, but they're coming out now. So that, oh, that's okay, Moose, okay. Ollie's character, Thomas, and Janice. I thought that he came from stairs. That's what I was getting you. He's running no, he's, he's running to the stairs. Must be oh, a ghost. Okay. And, 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 must and, be a and, ghost. And I, start, and I start going downstairs. Gotcha. We'll get to you in a second, Scott. Yeah. Uh, Dave. Uh, the three of you, what are you doing now that the elevator has you come out and constantly just sprinted off past Debra? Uh, so Debra, you- Did you guys- Did it yeah. skip? What just happened? It must Janice have just- gone up and down and we didn't notice or feel it no that doesn't no no it. no uh, it's a it's a ghost nona used to Can tell I me about examine ghosts. the elevator you are welcome to examine the elevator i would like to examine the elevator what do i need to do to examine so uh it's like a perception uh, well if you want to do like a full inspection of the thing is that what you're looking to do yeah um then that's going to be for you investigation plus uh wits wits plus investigation okay yeah um, and it doesn't look like it's like a crime or anything like that. No, the elevator looks, Not it yet. seems to act normal, completely normal. Two successes. So Two successes. you walk in there into the elevator and again, it's, it's completely normal, at least on the outside and the inside, you start looking at the buttons and, uh, do you try the elevator yourself or do you not dare touch it? 
Uh, I'm not going to do that quite yet. I'm just kind of looking to see if I see anything out of the ordinary. Right, right, right. You actually don't notice anything out of the ordinary. There's no blood. There's uh, no loose gears or anything like that looks oddly broken or obviously broken. No wire sticking out. Everything looks and feels like it should be acting normally. All right. I look for, in the elevator, there should be uh, either like an emergency phone or there's like contact details somewhere in the apartment for like an engineer usually in these usually, kind of Usually even in the 50s there should be a yeah. phone that you could pick up and uh yeah. and do you want, get to the do you want me to check it? I can I can look. I am a mechanic. I can look. I mean, I don't know Did you why is everybody freaking the elevator? out. No, but I mean it's it's got cords. They move. I mean, it's it, Listen, I've worked on some pretty nice muscle cars that get way more beastly engines than this thing. So, this is nothing. I can open it up and look at it. I, I hate to inform you, my dear Moose, but an elevator is exceedingly different than a car. I mean, also, it doesn't belong to any of us, so I think you just leave it up to the professionals to do this kind of thing. What about the doctor? How about this? Why don't we just go find him? Because he's kind of squeamy somewhere. Janice is actually it runs her fingers through her hair, and she's like, he went to go check the stairs. The stairs, the, the, I was able to get down. We're through the stairs, so they should work, right? Yeah, you know, there's gunshots. Yeah, I'll, I'll go check on him and see if he needs some medical attention. <laughs> I, I think I'm funny, and I walk off. <laughs> um, I click Deborah my fingers at that point, point and yep. then I, I point to Deborah and it's like, the gunshots were upstairs. That's and correct. you run downstairs, didn't you, Constantine? Well, I, I attempt to. Yeah, 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 we're gonna get to him in a second. I would start going upstairs. Did you pull the phone, Thomas, or no? If there was one, and there's yeah, like an emergency. There's like a big old timey like thing you can like that'll lead you to the get you to the to the operator. Um, lobby downstairs yeah, I, I'd suggest that to Deborah. Then it's like the gunshots were upstairs. And then I'd try yeah, we did hear something. So as you pull the phone, Ollie, and you listen, and you talk, there's nothing. Just complete dead silence. No, no hissing noise. Nothing. Dead silence. I. I and you, as, so yeah, as you say that, picking up the phone. And uh, I Const suppose we can't contact the professionals. Constantine, you're sprinting. I'd There's like gotta to be a number on there somewhere. We can call from your phone, can't we? A wits plus composure check, uh, Constantine, please. She uh, looks at Janice. Uh, she's um, like, we could try, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, we have con I have contact numbers in my, my apartment, in my apartment. And she's like, freaking out. Cigarette's gone. She dropped it in like uh, the elevator. I'll give her another cigarette. She clearly needs one right now. <laughs> <laughs> one success, that's all you need is give me a success. So Constantine is sprinting down these hallways. He's desperate for logic, an answer, something that makes sense. Uh, the elevator threw him off kind of wildly. As he's sprinting, he's he's a perceptive man. He's an intelligent man for an eye with an eye for detail. That is his profession. He is to look for things that are out of place or wrong in the human body, and it's easier in the real world than it is in a human body. You're running through the hallway. And at the end of the hallway, before you get to the stairs, there's usually a window that leads outside. And usually that window, even at night with the street lights and the moonlight, uh, a pale orange glow typically comes through, uh, illuminating the wonderful peeling green paint and the semi-dirty rug that gets vacuumed or brushed up or sweeped once every other week. Um, and, and the dancing glow of maybe a moth bouncing on one of the lights in the hallway itself. As you're running towards the window, those little details, the orange glow, the the, ob the weirdly illuminated paint that's being hit by the street lights, the moth, none of that is happening. And as you get closer and closer to the window, you start to realize there's no light coming from the window at all. And that's never happened. Again, he clamors closer and closer and closer until you can finally look out. And when you look outside, you see nothing but black, a starless sky. The buildings and the streets are completely missing. The building looks like it is floating in a void of nothingness. Oh, oh it look a little, okay, so why can't, can, does, the, does the window open? You, you try and it does not, but you can, it may just be locked in a, in a panic. Um, okay, well, I, I, I take a moment, I, like when I can't get it open, I do calm down enough okay. to properly look how this window opens and if it can. A, it's a sliding up kind of window and it is not budging no matter how hard you try. 
All right. Um, what floor? Do, what floor is my apartment on? Uh, your apartment is on the fifth floor. So what? Two floors down. One floor down. You're on the sixth right now. I'm gonna head. To, I'm gonna actually head to my apartment. My my goal is to uh, retrieve my gun, and to try try one of my windows, which I know open. Okay. As you're about to hit the stairs, that's when you hear Janice behind you scrambling uh, to head up to you and probably where uh, I, I, I actually stop from like Janice head back to, head back to the group. Something's going on here. I don't understand what, but uh, just uh, uh, don't follow me for the moment. And at that, we'll take our first break. Okay. First first hour break. We'll be back in a little while. We'll go grab drinks, go to the bathroom, <laughs> just a few minutes, uh, and we will continue on with this merry little adventure. Uh, with these these yes, people, thanks for Mary, watching. Mary, that's merry what we we'll call it. <laughs> this is a, just a happy little adventure, it's all. <laughs> My what hand is a little bit in your frame. I just noticed that right now. I'm just like, oh, Whose hey, frame? Yours. Oh, hell yeah. If you if you came a little closer, I could pet your face. Which side? Oh, Which yeah, side? yeah, right there, yeah. Right there? Yeah. 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 Oh, high five. I, I yeah. can touch you. Oh, hey. All, all right, right, we'll be I back. All right, I'll uh, see everybody in a couple minutes. Bye.